Hey gang, AV here, and welcome to my review of the DC Multiverse 1989 Batman figure. Um, this is him, obviously, out of the packaging. Um, I purchased him loose on eBay. Uh, if he did, was still in the packaging, it would look very similar to this. Trying to do that without the glare. Um, this was obviously the packaging I got for the unmasked version, which is right here. I'll do a closer examination of the two of them in a second. Um, the only major difference would be that this picture, instead of being of Bruce Wayne as Michael Keaton, it would be a Batman, fully masked as Michael Keaton, as seen in the Tim Burton 1989 film. Uh, but as I said, I got him out of the packaging... There really isn't much to say about the packaging other than it's usually a nuisance to open without damaging it, which I clearly did. Um, don't really have anything else to say about the packaging. I just wanted to talk about the figure itself. Um, here he is next to his unmasked version, and if you watch the review for the unmasked version, which not many people did... Uh, <laughs> as I can tell by the view counts. But basically, the unmasked version is a, is exactly the same as this particular figure. The only thing different is the head sculpt. Everything else is exactly the same. Um, he's got a cloth cape. Uh, he's got pretty good detail, considering he's a four-inch figure uh, from the time period that he came in. Um, I love the emblem. I like the way the the cape goes underneath the cowl uh he's got a decent pose when when his uh arms and legs are pretty static uh there really isn't much going on underneath the cape it's just basically his uh copyright information there on his back um i do like the way the cape goes over his shoulders just like it did in the movie um the uh face plate the the cowl i'm sorry actually is very reminiscent of the film it looks looks the part it's a good looking figure i i really like it and uh even though it's not really up to standard um modern standards as far as articulation goes his articulation is pretty decent like his arm could go all the way up and around just like uh you would expect as long as you get the cape out of the way um go out about 90 degrees um there's nothing at the bicep there's elbow can bend about 90 degrees there is no pivot there uh, and his hip fists rotate he has a permanent closed fist for a right hand and a grasping left hand um his head's on a ball joint and does 360 degrees but does not do anything else besides that um there is a waist swivel um, his legs can go up about that far. His knees can bend about 90 degrees. He does have a thigh rotation, allowing for his leg to do a 360 above the knee. His ankles, well, there's nothing there. <laughs> but he does have one other point of articulation, which I forgot, his hips. His legs can go out. So, I mean, his, his articulation is pretty decent considering his size and the and the, uh, the fact that he's like a 10-year-old figure. But um, for the most part, there really isn't a lot to say about him. And he's tough to compare to, like, modern figures with the level of articulation and detail that they have. Um, but I will say, since I am a, a, a an adult collector and I do pose my figures on the shelf... He's going to look great on the shelf, just standing as he is. Um, he doesn't really have to do very much dynamic poses-wise, even though he is part of the dynamic duo. He doesn't have to be that dynamic when I put him on the shelf. Um, this particular Batman kind of always did look stiff, so it, I think it suits him. Um, he did come with one accessory, which is basically his uh, grapple gun. Same exact accessory that came with the... Uh, with the unmasked version and it is reminiscent to the film uh very accurate only paint app is on the uh on the tip of the uh grapple gun there um he has a serial number on the bottom of his foot not sure if you need to know that but there it is 
and that's about it. Uh, we'll do size comparisons now. Here he is next to a modern era GI Joe. Although I guess I can't really say that for too much longer since the six inch line is coming out. Um, he is of comparable size. I'm not sure if it's coming in as accurately as it should on my camera here, but he is about the same size as a four inch figure, which is pretty good. A little bit taller. But he definitely fits in with that, with that scale of four inch figure. Um, here he is next to a vintage three and three quarter inch GI Joe. And as you can see, he is noticeably taller than him. Um, I think he's a great figure. Um, is he worth the, uh, the 50 plus dollars that people are asking for him online still in the package? Uh, Maybe, maybe not. I mean, it depends on how desperately you, you want them and what you plan to use them for. Uh, if you just need them to complete a collection and he's just going to sit on your shelf anyway, then maybe, yeah. Uh, he looks good, and he's going to look good on, his, on your shelf. Um, if you genuinely want a good Batman to play with, maybe not. Uh, there are better versions of Batman out there and much cheaper versions of that. Um, all in all though I do really like this figure I and I would recommend picking them up if you can find them loose um, in the package you know he, he doesn't really shine as well as he does in hand and uh, with that being said uh, this has been AV if you like this video please check out my channel if you like what you see there then please subscribe and as always thanks for watching